everyone and welcome back yet again to my channel on Tractive Education, running for the best education possible from the student to the student for a better experience. And today we will be continuing our chapter yet again uh, from the 10th standard syllabus for the second term, that is reproduction in organisms. Right, and today we will be taking up the next and the most important form of reproduction in organisms, that is sexual form of reproduction. Right? Now, in the previous videos, we have looked at asexual reproduction. And we saw that asexual reproduction requires only one parent, right? So there's one parent who is copying his DNA, copying his genetic material and passing it off to his offspring to produce an offspring and blah, blah, blah. We looked at all that. It's all its types and whatnot. We've looked at it in a lot of detail. But now let us now look at one new perspective. You know that in our world, right, there is a world, there is a globe in our world, right? There is, there's a world, the earth, and in the earth, due to human activities, due to various things, due to various factors, there are many changes which are taking place, right? And we can name many of these changes. There can be climatic change, there can be atmospheric change, right? We have so many changes taking place. Climate change is taking place, atmospheric change is taking place, then lithospheric changes are taking place, the land is changing, right? There are so many changes and there are various factors. There are geographical factors, there are biological factors, there are chemical factors, there are geological factors. There are so many factors and all these factors are resulting in some or the other form of change in our mother earth, right? We've looked at that and we've looked at these things in geography and many other subjects, right? So these changes are coming about. But the problem comes up, okay, there are changes, but the problem arises when we realize that some of these changes may prove to be harmful. Right? That is when the problem actually comes up, when we realize that some of these uh, changes may be harmful to living organisms in their present condition, in the conditions they have and with the characteristics they have at present, these may prove to be harmful, right? So we are not able to adapt to these changes, rapid changes. So if we had only asexual reproduction in the world, right, and we know that these changes may prove to be harmful if we continue the form of body design or the form of characteristics we have at present, right? So to accommodate, to adapt to these changes, we need to change ourselves also, right? We have to change with time. So if we only follow asexual reproduction, which provides almost, almost zero variation, or we can say negligible variation, if we continue to just take up asexual reproduction, if organisms just perform asexual reproduction, then frankly speaking, life on Earth will become very, very difficult because you are not able to bring about variation, to bring about change in yourself, and you're not able to go about with the changing time. So it may lead to the, well, finishing of life from Earth, wiping of life away from the surface of the Earth. So it is important that there is some degree of variation in organisms so as to maintain life, right? So the biggest disadvantage of asexual reproduction is that it does not allow for variation to take place and hence gives a risk or poses a risk for, you know, less and for more vulnerability to, uh, uh, to harm due to the changes occurring in environment, right? So this is one of the biggest disadvantages of asexual reproduction that people ask, okay, fine, then what's the solution to this? Well, as organisms have developed over the years, 
we have also come up with the concept of sexual reproduction, right? And we've discussed what sexual reproduction is. It is a form of reproduction which requires two parents. There should be two organisms and their DNA is combining to form a new organism with the combined DNA, right? So let me take an example. If we have the cell of one parent and we have the cell of another parent, right? These two cells are combining to form a new cell. Now, just now don't consider this the actual process. I'm just giving an example. So this is cell one, this is cell two. They combine together to form new cell three, which is the offspring of the two cells. So suppose this is uh, cell one, cell two, this is off offspring, right? Now, Basically, if we want to bring and, you know, if we want to combine the DNA, obviously DNA needs to be doubled here in this cell. And DNA also needs to be doubled in this cell. So in both the cells, you need to double the DNA. And you need to double the DNA to be able to provide a sufficient amount of DNA to the offspring as well. Moreover, you also need to double the cellular apparatus, cellular apparatus from this cell and cellular apparatus from this cell. This would include your plasma membrane, the cell organelles, the ribosomes, all these things together need to also double so that it is, they are able to provide the same to the offspring. Right now, this is what takes place in sexual reproduction. The DNA combines and forms a new organism, so does the cellular apparatus and these two combine and form a new organism. Now this is what basically takes place in your sexual reproduction. Basically two parents combine their DNA, two parents come together to produce an offspring, right? This is called sexual reproduction and it involves one major process that is fertilization. Fertilization is basically, as we've learned in our lower classes, the fusion of male and female gametes. And you know what are gametes? Gametes are the sex cells, right? So they combine together, fertilize, and so uh, the DNA combines because you know the gametes contain chromosomes. These combine and they form a new offspring with a particular genetic material, right? So, putting this in perspective, if we see, you can represent this very well diagrammatically. And this can be done like this. You know that there is one. Please forgive me, my diagram comes a bit jittery. So, you know that there is DNA from here. Right? So, this is DNA from the parent. One. And then you have DNA from parent two, right? So you have DNA from parent two. So these two DNA combine, right? So this is the DNA from parent one, so DNA from parent two. Suppose this is from the father because you know there'll be a male gamete. And this is from the mother. This is female gamete. They will combine together and they will come together at a point and they will continue the DNA. But this time it will be a mixture. Right? So there's going to be a mixture of DNA from the two parents. Right? So it's basically a combination of the DNA from both parents and this is comp this is the DNA of offspring. Right? So that's what we call sexual reproduction. That's basically what is taking place in sexual reproduction. Combination of DNA, right? So here we have combination of DNA. Combination. Excuse me. Combination of DNA. Right? That's what's happening in this reproduction process, right? So that's what we call sexual reproduction. And its necessity, well, that's what's taking place, right? But now a question.
question may arise, right? May, some people might think of this. If you're combining DNA from the male, right, and from the female, that is from the two parents you're combining DNA and you're bringing it together in the offspring, right, and DNA is combining, genetic material is combining, right, so if there is N here, there is N here, you'll get 2N here. Then there is 2N here, and this offspring will one day combine with another, you know, organism and it is going to come together and form another organism, right? So this is going to be 2N, this is going to be 2N again, this is becoming 4N. So this question may arise if there is so much combination of DNA on the earth, if there's so much mixing of DNA on the earth, then won't it result in just DNA on this earth? Because DNA is, com you know, continuously replicating, 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 and continuously going on from generation to generation, as in this process, as I've explained here, right? So, won't a time come at this rate that in on the earth you will have only DNA left and nothing else will be there, right? So this question may come in some people's mind. We have a clear-cut solution for that. And who has provided the solution? Nature itself. The solution is that unlike, you know, reproduction process, unlike, you know, other processes and other cells and other chromosomes, other type of cells, the nature and nature in case of sexual reproduction has produced particular specialized cells. So nature has given us the concept of specialized cells for the process of reproduction, right? Which contain only half, half of the total, of the total DNA in a normal cell. Right, so nature has provided us with the solution. There is particular cells which contain only half of the DNA as that of a normal cell which combine together and form a full DNA during the process of fertilization, right? So this maintains the fact that there will be a fixed amount of DNA in each organism and DNA won't keep replicating, DNA won't keep increasing on the earth, right? So that is what has happened and that's very good. Right. So usually, as I've explained in my cell division uh, series as well, that there is two N chromosomes. Right. There are two N chromosomes in a normal cell. So in a uh, sex cell or in a gamete, there will be only N chromosomes. Right. We've discussed that. Right. So N and N come together, form a two N. Right. That will be the zygote. So un and the zygote will be a complete cell. So gametes are the only cells in the organ in the human body which have only half the number of chromosomes because they combine together and form a cell which has the total number of chromosomes which will further develop into a new individual, right? So that's what we call combination of DNA and sexual reproduction. That's it with sexual reproduction. That's an intro of sexual reproduction to all of you, right? I hope that's completely clear to all of you, right? I hope there's no problem at all. Right, so that's an introduction to sexual reproduction. I hope you understood something. Thank you very much for joining me today. That was a complete introduction to sexual reproduction. In the next video, we will be starting off with sexual reproduction in plants, right? So that's very, very important. A short topic. We'll discuss it and finish it off very quickly. Thank you very much for joining me today. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Any comments and suggestions and doubts will be welcomed in the comment section below. Uh, thank you very much for joining me. Uh, stay healthy, stay smart, and do keep studying. Goodbye.